three talks. And the first talk we will have is um, delivered by Petar Kromos. I hope I pronounce it more or less correctly. Yes, um, It will be a talk on um, splitting methods um, for Cauchy problems with um, dynamical boundary conditions. So Petra, the floor is yours. Um, please start sharing your screen if you want to. So please let me give a feedback that you can see my screen. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much also for the introduction and also for the possibility for giving a talk here because although I have been taught for more than one year online <laughs> from the kitchen, this is my first time uh, giving an online talk in an online conference. So today uh, I will speak about how operator splitting procedures can be applied for dynamic boundary problems. And uh, this talk is uh, based on the joint work with the professors Balint Farkas and Matthias Erhardt from Wuppertal University. And uh, it will appear in the journal Operators and Matrices. Here you can see the outline of my talk. So first I will of course explain what uh, operator splitting means and also dynamic boundary problems. And then I will couple them and uh, show you how my uh, or, or approximation scheme looks like. And then we will talk about the convergence analysis and also some kind of numerical experiments, which uh, illustrates the theoretical part of, of this convergence analysis. So as a motivation, let me start with a, with a short picture. So um, let, let, let us consider a nice bounded uh, domain omega with a smooth boundary d omega, delta omega. And um, let us suppose that we have some kind of, uh, of um, physical process inside this domain, which is given by this equation u dot equals au. And we also have a problem on the boundary of this domain, for example, v dot equals bv. They are then decoupled at this point, but now we will couple them because on the boundary, we suppose that on the boundary, this u of t equals v of t. This is somehow in our mind when, when we are uh, uh, treating these, bound these coupled boundary problems. So here you can see maybe a nicer picture. And then just the motivation is uh, very, you can, you can um, uh, be faced problems like this, is like the cells in a tissue. So they are the cells in a tissue. And then uh, you can imagine that we have some kind of diffusion or something inside the cell and something happens on the boundary of the, of the cells. Maybe we have some uh, other influence from the outer cells, but at this point, we only consider the, the boundary uh, problem. The first idea would be to solve the problem separately, of course. So first we solve the problem on the boundary, and then we have this boundary value here, this V, and then using this V as the boundary condition for the inside problem, we can also solve the problem inside omega. So I just write here inside omega. This is a very nice splitting actually, because now we have um, a problem on the boundary and problem inside the omega. The problem is that it is wrong. So why do I say that this is a wrong? Uh, the, the idea is very perfect, but the problem is that in this setting, this is wrong because uh, some numerical experiments shows that uh, the convergence of this method is not the expected one, what we are, we are expecting. Of course, I will explain what I am, I am uh, considering expecting, expected convergence and so on. So we need some modification. The question is how to modificate this uh, setting here. And this is what uh, I will uh, speak about. First, of course, I have to define or I have to introduce the operator splitting idea. 
So, of course, we are in the conference about, uh, about uh, operator semigroups. So now we consider an abstract Cauchy problem on the Banach space X with the sum of two operators. So we have a blue A and the red B. And we have some assumptions, of course, in order to be able to apply operator semigroup theory. We assume that also blue A and red B are generators of C0 semigroups, and also their sum with some appropriate domain, or at least uh, their closure, its closure is a generator of a strongly continuous semigroup. Then we all know that the solution of this Cauchy problem has this form. So this is now. Uh, this the exponential form, I write it in this form because we will have several um, uh, semigroups. So this is the semigroup generated by A plus B. And if we apply that at time T um, to the uh, initial value, then we get, of course, the solution at T. Now, by using the semigroup law, we can rewrite this into that form. So this is nothing as but T over N, and here I have an N power. And now we have the, here we will have the approximation. We can approximate this semigroup by the product of the separate semigroups and on the power of n. So this is somehow the, the Trotter product formula, of course, but only for one n. So here I just say, I just write this uh, formally an approximation. You can see that here we have here, this, now we have a lot of pictures drawing there, sorry. So this is an operator and this operator I will call S of T over N. Uh, this is because of splitting, of course, because this is some kind of splitting, yes? Because we split A plus B into only A and only B. This is like, as if the physical phenomena, physical, I mean, they could be, of course, biological or social or any phenomena to place one after the other. So not at the same time as here, we have, for example, a diffusion and an advection and they act at the same time. But first, uh, the diffusion acts and only the advection. And again, diffusion and ad advection and so on and so on. So this, what happens here, I will denote by S, this operator S. So now then we have an approximation of this form. I approximate U of T, so the exact solution of the abstract Cauchy problem by this splitting, this splitting operator to the power of N applied to the initial value for O N. There exist, of course, also more splittings, not just the Lee splitting, which uh, I have already shown you. This is the so-called Lee splitting, but we also have the strength splitting when we first apply the half time step with operator A and then a, a whole time step by operator B and again a half time step by operator A. And we have the weighty splitting when actually we weight the Lee splitting uh, when we take the average uh, first when we have the B A order and here we have A B order so on the contrary and then we have this uh, the average of these uh, two solutions. So in our work we consider these three splittings and what uh, what have we done with them? So first we should see that this approximation means, that instead of this continuous U of T function, the splitting, the application of splitting results in these uh, discrete values in time. So T, I usually say time. However, I know that it can be any other, any other physical or other um, quantity. So here we only have, because this is, for example, zero, this is T over N, this is two times t over n and so on and so on for some fixed value of n. Of course, this n will go to infinity later on. But before that, I just mentioned a, a couple, couple of examples where the splitting is very useful. For example, if one has an air pollution transport model, then we have some advection due to the wind diffusion due to the molecular diffusion in the air, some chemical reactions. 
But very interestingly, option pricing has also this Black Scholes model looks also uh, the same as this advection diffusion reaction. Um, problem. Or maybe we have some physical problems with dynamics and we have some control or some potential and we can split the dynamic the dynamics and the potential. This will be, for example, A and this will be B. I could mention Schrodinger equation, linear quadratic Legura problems, and so on and so on. Here you can see just an example. So this is, for example, the advection diffusion equation. And then when we uh, consider the splitting, instead of having this uh, movement of this, uh, for example, um, uh, concentration function, uh, we have a little bit of advection in this, in this um, uh, direction and a little bit of, of uh, diffusion, a little bit of advection, a little bit of diffusion, and so on and so on. Yes, and you can see that in some way this should converge to this kind of smooth solution. Okay, so this was operator splitting. The question is how to measure, how to define its convergence. This is an approximation scheme. Of course, the question is whether the solution, the approximate solution will be more accurate when the resolution gets finer. So here you can see this picture. We have already seen that. And this is now T. So you can see I also wrote that T. Now with this resolution, we have some error here. This is an error bar, maybe. This is an error. This is the difference between the exact solution at this point and the numerical solution. If the resolution gets finer, then this error gets smaller. So now Revind and again, yeah, it gets smaller and smaller. So this is what we call actually um, so this is the definition. The approximation is called convergence at some t uh, time level if, of course, this limit goes to zero. So this is the error that is measured here, of course, in the norm. But we can uh, define another uh, convergence uh, notion. It is convergent of order p if there exists a constant such that the error can be estimated by c over n to the power of p. So the error is something like 1 over n to the power of p. And this is very important for us because in this talk, uh, this is what I will call this expected order. Why is it the expected order? So for the lean splitting, it should be first order, and the strength and weight in splitting should be second order. Because for matrices, when A and B are matrices, then, these, then we get these orders. And therefore, we aim at uh, getting the same orders also when we are uh, working in uh, other Banach spaces and partial differential equations and not matrices anymore. So this is what I will call expected order. Lee splitting is first order strength and beta splitting is at second order. So let us see how to apply this uh, uh, splitting uh, um, methods for dynamic boundary problems. So we have already seen uh, this, uh, the actually already, we, we saw already these equations. So we have now two Banach spaces and we have one abstract Cauchy problem in Banach space E and another Cauchy problem in the Banach space F. And we have some coupling between the two solutions. Here L is an operator. We have already seen this example. If omega is really a bounded domain with smooth boundary d omega, this is what we already had. And E and F are L2 functions on the corresponding domains. And A and B are the Laplacian and the Laplace Bertrami operator. This is also a diffusion here. There is also a diffusion only on the boundary. And L is the trace operator. Then we can see that Vt is the boundary value of u of t. So this was a motivating example. However, when taking these assumptions, when A and B are linear, 
L is also linear surjective bounded with respect to the graph norm. B generates an analytic semigroup on F. And this A, uh, this is a technical thing here. This is a closed operator matrix. And we need some kind of assumption also on A. Yes, because B is a generator, but what is A? And you can see that we, we don't, uh, ex we don't um, assume that A is generator. We assume that the restriction of A to the kernel of L generates an analytic semigroup on E. So these assumptions, they are very general assumptions and they also um, uh, consider the delay equations or also some dynamics on networks. So when we, we, we had in mind really this diffusion problem, we knew that they assum these assumptions are more general than just this uh, diffusion in the cell or something. This was just the motivation. Now the question is how to apply this splitting that I have shown you. We need some abstract Cauchy problem here, yes? I mean an abstract Cauchy problem. Here we have two abstract Cauchy problems, but we only need one. So the idea is to introduce these oper this operator matrix, this uh, bold face A. This looks like a diagonal matrix, operator matrix. However, its domain is not diagonal. It has something, some, it is the coupling actually in the domain. But with this operator matrix, the original problem can be written as only one ACP with this dynamic boundary condition. Yeah, so this really looks like, as in the beginning, for this vector unknown function. So the question is now, later on, how to split this uh, into this calligraphic A plus B. This will be the question. But before doing this, uh, let me cite the theorem of Casarino, Engel, Nagel, and Nicker from 2003. Uh, they said that under these assumptions, this operator bold phase A generates a C0 semigroup, and it is also, of course, an operator matrix. So, of course, you are not uh, really, it is, it is of, of course, we, we, we have expected that here is on the, in the first element, there is a, the semigroup, here is also a semigroup. However, also in the right, uh, top element, we have something, this Q of T. Yeah, it has some kind of uh, um, form. You don't need to remember to that. Here, this D, D naught, this is the abstract Dirichlet operator. So you don't need to remember that, only that there, there is a pink term. So please remember that there was a pink term here, and I will refer to this as a pink term. This is actually uh, a convolution of the two semigroups, also with this D naught and the B operator. So this will be the pink term. And this theorem was the, was the basic one we've, we worked with. So now let me call your attention that here on the, on the uh, left, uh, the, so the first element here is operator A, However, here we have the semigroup generated by operator A naught. So here you can assume that maybe if A is with the Laplacian, then this A naught, this is the Laplacian with homogeneous boundary condition. And then this makes it having this homogeneous boundary condition. Okay, so please remember the pink term. Now the question is which operator to split? So now also these authors, uh, showed that this operator can be written as the product of, uh, of these three operators, and we will split this operator in the middle. Here we have three operators, actually. So the first one is the blue A, of course, because there is also a letter A, so it is nice to call it, call it A. And this is now the, the red B. But here in the middle, we also have something. So this I will call the green C. So now we have C operators, but fortunately these splittings can be also defined for three operators in a, in a very straightforward manner. So these splittings we applied, and now the question was whether it is convergent. So here 
well, uh, you, can, you can read it, you know, work that this approximation looks like this. Here we have the, the semi-groups and here we have another pink term, which you don't need to remember at all. However, it is very important that this pink term here can be computed corresponding to the splittings. And then to show the convergence, we had to show that this SN pink term converged to this, uh, uh, this uh, convolution pink term. So therefore they are pink because they should converge. Uh, the result was the following. So now uh, the following estimates hold. So this was the error. This is the error of our um, approximation scheme. And then this is the same as the difference of the pink terms. And here, so we have to, we have to, we have to compute a lot. And then we can see that this for the least splitting looks like this. And for the strength and the weight is splitting this. Please remember that the expected orders are one and here too. And really we have here a one, a one over N. And here for very nice, very large omega, we have uh, not omega, sorry, gamma, we have almost one over n squared. Okay, so this is what we wanted to show and this we really had. So please, so let me just mark that, uh, that we really done, we have really done what we wanted to do. So the proof, well, this is just an extract from uh, our paper. It is very technical and very long. So let me skip it. Let me omit this. And I just list here the main tools we used. We used that this abstract delicious operator is bounded. We used the Taylor formula, which we call, of course, the midnight formula, because we have to know it also in the middle of the night, and the analytic semigroup uh, 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 properties. And of course, a lot of, lot of, lot of technical things. But the important is that, that we could show that. Now in the last few minutes, let me show you some numerical experiments. I mean that it is very nice that we had this proof. So theoretically, the convergence is proved, of course, but uh, we were very interested in uh, whether numerically we could illustrate that. So because you know computers, they are very yeah, unstable sometimes. So whether these numerical ex experiments we really illustrate, we, whether we can really get these orders. So first um, we consider the heat equation over um, this uh, zero pi interval. So this is the heat equation. And we had some exponential growth and decay on the boundary. This is just an ordinary differential equation. So on the boundary in time, this is in time, the blue, uh, values uh, 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 describe exponential growth and the red uh, ODE and exponential decay. Then we had the, these uh, solutions. So from the red initial value here, this is now in X in space and time is somehow written there. So from the red initial condition, everything went there until the blue one. Okay, so this is just how it is. it looks like. We had another example, again, with uh, heat equation, but now with a harmonic oscillator on the boundary. So the red and the blue uh, together, well, they together actually, because they are coupled. So they were just uh, some uh, oscillating values on the boundary. And now the initial function was this red function. And now you can see that in time it changed, changed that uh, at the end of the time when everything was already blue, then uh, it forgot, of course, the initial function and we only had this um, uh, harmonic oscillation on the boundary. So they were the examples and what we saw, we saw for the convergence order that we know that if the error is uh, approximately, um, <laughs> one over n to the power of p, then of course, in the logarithmic scale, we have a straight line. Yes, and these straight lines are here where these, the slope of these uh, straight lines uh, correspond to the numerical order. 
and uh, we could see and we could fit some uh, uh, lines and so on and so on. So for the least splitting, the theoretical order should be around one. And we really got a very, very nice one. For the strength splitting, almost the same. Yes, 1.25, it here 1.24. For the weight is splitting, it was a little bit of smaller, but still not 0 0.5 or something. So I would say it is okay. And also for the harmonic oscillator case, this one was very nice. Here we got even better orders than the expected one and also here. So as a takeaway, as a short summary, I would say that we uh, introduce the new approximation scheme for dynamic boundary problems, which applies operator splitting and converges of the expected order. So thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Petra, for this very nice and very interesting talk. Are there any questions or comments? Just turn on your microphone and ask. Yeah, of course, just unmute yourself and, and ask a question. Um, so I have one question um, concerning your theorem. You have these um, optimal orders, one over n and one over n squared, but you have this logarithmic correction term. Yes. Both. Um, and you told us that for the matrix case, you don't see this logarithmic term. Exactly, yes. So is it, is it now optimal in the, in the general case to have this logarithmic yeah. um, correction factor? Yes, it is usually there. So um, so if, uh, yes, so some someone who is familiar with these numerical things, uh, they have seen this logarithmic term very often. So you just get it from, from really from the order. And so these norm estimates. But it is actually not, not a big problem because you can see that the one over n looks like somehow so this, and this the, with the logarithmic something like that. And of course, you are interested in this part of the n tends to infinity. So it is not a big problem that for, for small n's, you have something here which is not the same, but, uh, but you are interested in this term. So I would say, um, yeah, I would say that as an ex expected order, yes, because I don't know how to avoid this logarithmic term there. I have a question uh, regarding this, this slide. Just go ahead. Yes. Um, the, the, this speed should depend on the vector uh, V0. Yes. So what is the speed? So this is most likely the best speed you achieved. Uh, but if you take uh, not so nice V0, uh, then uh, you can put in, it into this integral formula and it will work, but the speed of convergence will be much worse. Exactly, exactly. This is the problem. So here I, I wrote uh, this should be DB3. Well, for that, of course, for the least splitting, we only need to have it in uh, the domain of B squared. And of course you are right. So all of these, the all of the error estimates that I shown you here. So I mean that uh, where is it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So this this paper here and everywhere, it is really worked only for uh, for, for smooth initial function v zero. So this is on the boundary. So this is the initial value on d omega. Yes, you are right. Yes, well, in, in our talk with Professor Galkin, we uh, showed the theorem uh, which allows to construct uh, as fast uh, convergence as you need, but also provided example that it can be also as slow as possible. For the Trotecato? Uh, uh, for Chernoff approximations, but it is very close thing. And there is also a paper by my student, uh, Pavel Prudnikov, who provided also a lot of numerics. So maybe it will be nice if you give a talk at my seminar or I give a talk at your seminar and we collaborate, maybe this can be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the idea. Thank you. Yeah, I also can add that operator splitting method is a, is a special case of Chernoff approximation. So Chernoff approximation is more general. Yes, of course, yes, yes, yes. Okay, are there any further questions or comments?
Okay, this does not seem to be the case. Then thank you, Petra, again. Thank you. And we will have the second talk in about.